various forums. Some of the key ones are Face of the Future Award at India Cargo Awards 2015, Exemplary Leadership Award at Express Logistics and Supply Chain Awards 2017, and Entrepreneur of the Year Award at India Cargo Awards 2017. And ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming and inviting Sri Yashpal Sharma for the keynote presentation. Let's put the hands together. Cities of the world were always cities which had a port 
themselves or had a fort in the very very close vicinity of them. You look at uh, Mumbai, for example, in India. You look at New York, and there are tons of examples like that. But if you look at the uh, last two or three decades, and you will see the major growing, fastest growing cities of the world are the ones which actually have great airports, which have a great air cargo ecosystem, because that's where the actual robust businesses start to get interactive. They can move people so that they can come and transact, discuss opportunities, and explore opportunities. At the same time, goods could move from there. It could improve supply chains. Imagine if a fashion could move in only 50 days from the point of origin after manufacturing to you. And you could see it on TV, but it could take 50 days to come to you. So this is what an air cargo could do. It could get made today, and tomorrow morning it could be delivered at your doorstep, probably anywhere in the world. That's the power that air cargo brings today. Number three is something that we don't really give a lot of importance to, but even the study of NCEAR and various other studies have showed that logistics cost, which has been a prime uh, importance for all of us, uh, even Ministry of Civil Aviation, Ministry of Commerce, everybody has been trying to see and explore how could we possibly downplay that. A large part of that is actually idling cost in India and around the world also. But the more that the raw material sits before getting manufactured, it's lying idle. And the more that the goods after manufacturing sit before the point of sale or even at the point of sale without being sold, that's the idling cost. But if today you, know, you, have, you have big data, you could do a lot of predictive analytics, you could actually make sure that you are able to move goods, manufacture goods to the closest point of sale, reducing idling of goods. And you could reduce that time hugely by using air cargo for your business. This is what Ministry of Civil Aviation is uh, envisaging to do, uh, along with all other ministries and, and private stakeholders. We are trying to move to 10 million tons. Yes, 10 million tons. This is double of what in Hong Kong, which is the number one airport of the world does today. We last year did about 3.14 million tons. And India is, a, India is a very unique market where we have uh, one third of the business on the domestic skies. We have one third almost exports and one third is imports. So we have a very equi uh, percentage of business which flows all through the air cargo chain. But obviously it is, it's a task which is looking very big. But let me tell you, this is definitely possible. Yet another graph that I wanted to show you, it talks about, you know, possibly if you look at our 7.5% CNGR, which we have been factoring in over the last decade, barring the COVID period, uh, we would get to about 6 million. And if we want to get to 10 million, we're looking at a debt of about 4, ton, 4 million tons in this. So obviously there needs to be a lot of things that need to be done, a lot of areas that needs to be explored, so that we can fill up this delta and all could really benefit of the same. So what is it actually that we, you know, kind of need to do? You know, we, what is it that will help us to get to 10 million tons and possibly more? First of all, what we all need to look at. So this is this is not just for the government, but this is also for the private sector because a lot of a lot of facilities and you know probably 70, 80 percent of business sits with the private sector. Uh, we need to constantly look at upgrading our uh, infrastructure. When I say constant upgrading, uh, it means that even though we may have uh, built something which was good to take us today, but it may not be good to take us tomorrow. There, there is huge advancements in, in the businesses today. We are not looking at advancements only in terms of how the business is moving, 